Welcome back to Waters Ironworks. We're out on open shop night at Pioneer Farms tonight, and I'm gonna be building a new forge. It'll be very similar to this one. Super simple construction, a couple four by fours, a frame to hold them together, some angle iron, and then a big steel plate. Cut a hole in it, fire pot drops right into it. Um, an incredibly easy forge for anyone to build if you're looking at building your first forge. Uh, I've got all my supplies here and uh, in the back of the shop. I need to cut some wood, which is not the most exciting. So I'm going to do that. And once we've got the wood cut and ready to go, we'll start assembling this thing. See you in a minute. So if you're curious, I am cutting these to about 29 inches. Um, that's a good height for sort of all kinds of different people. Um, low enough that it's easy to work with, high enough that you're up off the ground. We've got all of our wood cut, and at this point, it's pretty much just screwing everything together. Long boards go on the side, well, the front and the back, short boards go on the sides. Um, you can use the boards themselves to make these measurements. You probably want to put this three, four, five inches, something like that, up from the bottom. The ones on the top should go a little bit above the top. The one I'm making, I forgot to measure long enough for an overlap here, um, so I'm going to have a little knock on each corner. It's probably nicer if you do measure those front boards a little bit long so that you don't have a gap right there. We're, we've got the two long bottoms on. We're gonna start screwing on the tops. What we wanna do here is make sure that the tops come level with uh, the top of our angle iron. So, piece of angle iron is, uh, at least this one is an inch and three quarters high. So I'm gonna overlap the top of the board by inch and three quarters. That way this is hidden from view once the forge is put together. So let's mark this. The angle iron's actually an inch and a half tall. I've got five and a half inch long boards. So we'll mark off four inches. And four inches. And that should give us the right overhang here. We've got our two uh, front and backs done. Next, we're gonna flip this over. Short pieces go on the side. Nice and easy, just line them up with what we've already got on here. I thought I had more angle iron in the uh, steel supply out back, but it looks like I'm out. So I'm not gonna put it in tonight. What you're gonna do though, is just cut your angle iron to size. The angle iron isn't screwed in, it just sits in here on each side. It provides a little bit of extra support. Is it strictly necessary? Probably not um, from a structure standpoint, but it will keep hot coals right off the wood. And that is something that you wanna do. So um, I'm gonna finish this up minus the angle iron, but the next step would be putting the angle iron in so the situation we're in is I was a little too precise with my measurements and I forgot that angle iron has thickness also. Um, and now that we're in this situation, I actually remember being in this exact situation when we built these in the past and forgot to do this. So I'm popping off the sides. Um, I'll screw them back in with a piece of angle iron in place so that this will all sit down there properly. Um, and I'll give you a quick cut through that, but I don't think you guys need to see all the details there. Pretty easy. I've got a little bit more adjusting to do. Uh, I'm going to do that once I've got the angle iron. I can drop them in, just unscrew it a little bit, screw it back together. And I think that's going to be a lot easier. Um, so when you're putting yours together, cut each board a little bit longer. Make sure you've got your angle iron. Um, 
you might put the bottom on, put the angle iron on the top, and then screw it all together once you've got that. Once you do get it put together with your angle iron in there so you're not burning the wood, then you want to position your fire pot more or less in the center. And we're going to come around here, draw a circle, trace the outline of where I want this to go. And now I need to cut this circle out. Uh, this is gonna get noisy. I'm gonna do it with an angle grinder. My goal is to, you know, I need a inch gap or something here for this to sit on. So I'm gonna come in. Just a little ways. Like that and cut that section out with an angle grinder. Then we can drop this in. One thing to note is my handle here is not gonna come out beyond the piece of wood. I find these to be a little bit short, so I'll go in and forge another one that's gonna be long enough that I can swivel it from out here. Um, I could obviously put this closer to the edge, but that starts getting pretty close to the wood. Um, I'd rather keep things a little bit more centered Give me a little bit more room as I've got coal and I've got my fire going. So we'll just forge a longer handle there. But let's get this cut out and drop this bad boy in. lot of hand cutting without power tools. There we go. We need, we need this piece here. So this is going to come on, screw in here uh, for our air holes. Let me go find some bolts. A couple videos ago, maybe last video, I talked to you guys about these Centaur Forge fire pots. I mentioned that they didn't come with, I think, an easy to use little connector. So uh, I have fabbed one up here. Um, you'll notice it has three screw holes in it, three bolt holes. Um, and this one has four. But this other one I bought at the same time, they missed a bolt hole. So when I was making my template, it only got three holes in it. Uh, this one will actually wind up going on here then, so it matches um, this fire pot. We're out of time for this evening, and I don't have the angle iron pieces I need. So we're gonna finish filming this next week at next week's open shop. Welcome to week two of the forge build. Uh, we just got the angle iron in, um, need to measure it and cut it rather than doing any fancy work with the tape measure. I'm just going to stick it in there and eyeball it and we'll cut it a little, little short here. So I think I need two pieces about that length. Let's go put it on the chop saw and cut it. If I remember it correctly from last week, we've got it the right length this ways, but not this ways. So I need to unscrew that side, open it up a little bit, screw it back in. Same thing on this side. Let's try and get it right this time. Let me grab the angle iron again and let's measure off what we need for these sides.
We've got all the angle iron in. Um, let's toss the piece of sheet steel back in and make sure it all fits. Centimeter too short or something, I think, here. Plate in, angle iron in. Time to put the uh, fire pup back in. I mentioned we were going to swap out this clinker breaker for a longer one. So I'm going to put this back together with the clinker breaker out of it. We're gonna have to slide that in and then attach the clinker breaker once it's in there. Since we want the bar to stick out from the wood. All right. That goes in. There are screw holes up here if you wanted to mount it. Um, completely unnecessary in my opinion. It's not going to move around that much. Um, I really never notice it move around, especially once a bunch of coal and grit and stuff gets in there. Um, you're going to be fine. So let's attach our hose attachment. Next up, We've got to drill the hole. Um, this can be a little tricky. I tend to just eyeball it and I've had pretty good luck with it. Um, what I will do a lot of times is compare it to one of our other forges to see how high it is up there. So let's do that. I'm going to jump in. Do you mind if I look at your forge for one second? So I know we're shooting for about that high up. And then I can wedge this end of the bottom to make sure that I'm lined up vertically. So I think right there is about where we want. Look at that. Right in there. And this can be a little tricky here. I mean, everything all nice and lined up. There we go. Clamp this down nice and tight. go. All right. Clinker breaker is installed and working. We've got a blower. It sounds like it's a little, uh, a little loud, a little knocky. Um, it may just be that we've got no oil in there. 
Let me grab a wire wheel. I'm going to clean this off a little bit. We'll open it up. We'll see if it's got oil in it. If it doesn't, we'll put some oil in it, see if it runs a little bit smoother. So we've got two screws here, which will take the top off. This one is actually nice. It's got a little oil inserter, but I just want to check out. I think I can get it open. What is going on inside? Looks like it is pretty well empty. So let's grab some oil and dump it in there. So it's still pretty noisy. It sounds like the fan is rattling in there, which may mean it needs to be adjusted on the set screw. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that for right now. We've got the forge in place. Um, we've got the blower pretty much where we want it. Might have to do a little bit of work on this here in a minute. Let's hook them up. So I've got um, some dryer venting. This is really not a great material for it, but I've got it, so I'm gonna use it. Um, I've got some duct tape also. We'll just duct tape it on to both sides and call it good enough for right now. Ideally, Something that doesn't fall as part as easily as this is a good choice. And having um, a clamp or something that you're holding it on there with is also a better choice. But you work with what you've got, right? That's gonna get so hot, close to the fire, the glue on is, and the duct tape is gonna melt. We've never really had that problem with it. Um, if anything, the problem we've had more frequently is um, it gets too cold out here sometimes and the duct tape will get brittle. So if you're trying to do a forge repair, sub zero degrees, duct tape gets hard to work with. So I can definitely feel, I don't know if you can see that on the video or not, but there's definitely some good airflow coming through there. Let me, uh, let me grab some coal. This bucket holds about a bag of coal, which is about 50 pounds of coal. One of the reasons I like making these forges so big is it lets you keep a lot of coal on there so you can push it in from the edges, coke it up, try and keep a nice clean fire. We're just gonna steal a little bit of fire from our neighbor. go. Would you bring me a coal rake? So we've got all fresh coal here. It is gonna smoke like crazy when we first get this fire going. This is flammable though.
this blower is going to need some work. Blower needs some work. That is terrible. Um, but we've got a fire. We can see it is clearly up and running. So two weeks, four hours or something like that could have been less definitely. And we've got a new forge up and running. So hopefully this was informative, but this is a great forge design. If you are looking at building a forge that you don't need to move around a lot, uh, I love these forges. Um, they work really well. We have a lot of new students that we teach on these and they have a great time with them as well. Um, the extra space really helps out. So thank you very much for joining me and we'll see you again soon.